What am I doing? So I've always wanted to... All right, so I've always wanted to make one of those beats where you walk around your house with a recorder and film and video and audio and record all kinds of different things. I drank way too much coffee. So I've always wanted to make one of those beats and videos where you go around filming a bunch of things that you audio recorded and cut it all together and make a video of the video of the audio recording in the beat. Okay, now, don't you know? So you're playing with your friends in Ableton one day. So I've gone through and uh... What you have on the top is the video file. If you look closely enough, I know it's hard to see, there's a bit of what appears to be a film strip there on the region, the blue one. There's a film strip effect. That's Ableton's way of letting you know that You got a video on there! This is the source for what you're seeing here. And if I control alt V off and on, that toggles Ableton's window of, uh, where is it? View the window, when, view the window window. I've spent the last little bit going through and aligning all these timelining, and here we are, this is what we have. Um, that was not the best reveal, I was gonna pan out and make that more dramatic. So we've got here quite a few things. As you can see, I went through my garage. I went through my garage and made some noises. I also was in my house making noises. Lots of good noises. So we cut them all together. And I'm continuing to shoot footage of my process of me editing previous footage that I shot because I'm a madman and I like to create a lot of data for me to deal with all the time. Transition. Hey, if you like this kind of content, please take a minute to like and subscribe and tell your grandma and click the bell for notifications and email a friend and print this to a floppy disk and mail it to your next door neighbor. It's YouTube. You know how it goes. Back to the video. If you look here, we've got uh, some things. And this, this is all going to go Nice. Nice. That's really the whole reason I did this. Just so I could make that part. This is also good. Well, you can't really hear much, can you? So this is a good example. A teachable moment, if you will. Uh, shift tab. If you click on a region, shift tab brings that region up, and I'll go down here to the corner, type in six and enter, just boost the gain on this whole thing by 6 dB, because I really want this part that I don't seem to be hearing. I don't think we're synced on this one. So when I do this, when I have something that has a very low gain, I tend to just, just jack it. Now this is what I've spent the last few minutes doing going through and time aligning all these things because you need the video and audio to sync well enough that it looks real <laughs> or that it doesn't you know if, if there's a slight delay in the in the what people are seeing on screen and what they're hearing it's it's distracting so you really have to get down into the waveforms and get down to the millisecond here Now, I don't worry too much about like phasing and stuff like that because ultimately I'm not using this. The video audio, which I also have, that I will solo now for you. I capture this audio mostly because I have no choice. I can't not capture it when I'm shooting with an iPhone. But it does help because it gives me these waveforms to look at. And if I can get close enough, like there, um, you have to keep in mind that there's a distance between the zoom recorder and the phone, so on some cases your zoom recorder will be ahead by a few milliseconds depending on how far away the shot is with the phone, and so you want to delay the phone footage by a little bit. Uh, you have to keep that in mind, but speed of light versus speed of sound, and we're talking about milliseconds here. And A few moments later. Now because I don't want to have too much to deal with here, I'll cut these together, or cut them apart I should say. Cut out that whole middle section where there's nothing happening and turn this into one 
off on, quick off on. I also liked this sound that it made. There's some good like computer whirring noises. But they're very quiet. So I can isolate this and so if I control J and consolidate that clip, I can unwarp it and continue to raise it up and just basically you could do this process infinitely boosting and consolidating and boosting again. Um, but I basically just push it right to the point where there's no distortion. Oh, well, it helps if I listen to the right one. You can notice this brings up the noise floor as well. Uh, you know, I'm trying to use a section that I really shouldn't have been able to use, honestly. There's just so much noise, but I do really like that whirring sound. So let me control Z that, control Z that region separation. And I'll just drag this back out. But as much as I like that computer whirring noise from the Xbox, that's going to have to be a project for a different time. Um, one thing I'm learning throughout this process and also especially learning from other artists, you got to cut so much stuff. Like moments because like so i spent the last minute and a half talking about this one little section of this whole major thing that we have here um so and i also took a second take of it anyway i think this computer whirring noise was better that's pretty satisfying let's hear that sounds like office space it's great Noise floor is not so good, but I'm thinking as I do this, you know, the track I'm going to make is going to have a lot of grainy noise in it anyway. Clicking sounds, clicking off sounds, clicking back on sounds, and putting on a record. Now I thought when I did this that I would probably cut out like most of this, because I'm not trying to make an overt Dilla sample, but I do like the, it just happened to be the record that I had on. But that sound is nice. Just that record on sound. When I was but I was thinking maybe using that in like the when I was. So right there, I'm already hearing. That could be its own thing. But same thing as last time. Got a lot to work with here. This whole one probably needs a good boosting. Once again, I'm not trying to make an overt Smash Brothers sample, but uh, it's just what was in there. I'll use a tiny bit of it. Door locking sounds, always good. Those are your hi-hats. This is hi-hat town, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, These are percussion noises, a great door lock has a gift gilded mini a track not from me of course but from people who are actually productive you know great noises so we'll cut that there and splice over to this next part some of these noises just weren't great I thought maybe the rumbling on the... Also notice the distance that we have here. You're looking at over a foot distance between the source. I just, there's only so close you can get with a tripod like that. Um, and again, we're, we're talking quantity here. I'm trying to just gather a large amount of things and throw it in and see what works, what ends up being good. Nice. This is one of those, like for example, I've been soloing the, the zoom recorder, but Strangely enough, it's one of those things that the phone recorder, the, the phone camera picks up even better. Those transients. But again, there's a question of gain staging. Um, one thing to note, if you could, you'll ever see this, is I have a gain knob here. 
I, I try not to mess with it too much when I'm shooting because I just know that it's another variable I'm gonna have to account for later. But if you notice, you're just not getting something. I should have gained up here. If you notice, you're just not getting something, it helps because I can always gain it up in the box later like this, but I bring up the noise floor when I do that. But depending on what kind of track you're making, you know, I might end up, in a perfect world, I may end up going through and trying to add noise to, to warm up the tone anyway, so it's just part of the deal. Happy trees, as uh, Bob Ross would say. Some door opening and closing noises. A nice wump that I wasn't sure how that would take. Kick drum. Uh, what's fun also, of course, to remember is all these things can be heavily processed just by shifting this up 12 steps. I've taken a sound that was a much le deeper, lower, kick drummy kind of sound. And now it's more approaching. I don't know if I'd try to use that as a snare, but it's it's an octave higher, so it's approaching uh, snare territory. Yeah, door locking sounds. Make and we're back. It's probably about enough of that. Uh, loop back just crashed on me because I'm using a trial version, so I only get 15 minutes at a time. But I kept the screen recording going so that I could sync it up again later using waveforms. Lamps off and on. How to make a video about making a video about making a track about sound design. Uh, none of this is musical, but... Stay tuned for part two, where I actually make music out of this. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think I've finished editing all of this. Uh, thanks for watching if you've made it to the end of this video. I know this is kind of a dense one with not as many cuts and interesting things like I normally try to do. Uh, what I'm trying to capture in this video is the process of making videos, which may sound a little strange, but uh, I don't see a lot of content on YouTube that shows the back-end labor that goes into making a lot of these videos. Um, it's kind of an arms race, really, when it comes to getting hardware that can even handle the amount of information you're trying to process. Um, but also getting software that can do what you're trying to do, uh, and, and that involves a lot of research. Um, you know, like I've always wanted to make a video with picture in picture in the bottom right corner with me doing a narration with the audio from an Ableton session being piped into the video. And uh, I've finally done that. So again, if you like this kind of stuff, please leave a like in the comments or click, write a comment or Whatever you do, just all the YouTube things, because uh, I would really appreciate the support, because I'm trying to make more videos for you. So, thanks.